Google made a gigantic leap with its Willow chip. Compared to the most powerful classical supercomputer, this one is 10 septillion times better. That's trillions upon trillions of times more than the lifespan of the universe. But before quantum computers can be used to create life-saving drugs that don't exist right now, they need to fit 1,000 qubits in a single processor for the next quantum leap. Keep watching till the end to find out how. In 2019, Google introduced its first significant quantum processor, Sycamore, which performed a computation in 200 seconds that would have taken a classical supercomputer approximately 10,000 years. Fast forward to December 2024, Google unveiled Willow, a more advanced quantum chip featuring 105 qubits. Willow completed a computational task in under five minutes, a task that would have taken the fastest classical supercomputers an estimated 10 septillion years. A key advancement with Willow is its enhanced error correction capabilities. By increasing the number of qubits and implementing real-time error correction, Willow reduces error rates exponentially, addressing a long-standing challenge in quantum computing. In summary, while Sycamore marked a milestone in quantum supremacy, Willow represents a significant leap forward in both computational power and error correction, bringing practical quantum computing closer to reality. And the key word right there is practical. It's not quantum computing because scientists have been thinking about quantum computing for a while now. It's the practical quantum computing that seems to be the problem nowadays. We need to figure out a way to make quantum computers capable of doing things for everyday people. And Google is closer to realizing that goal than anyone else. If you're trying to imagine how much this is, then here are some reference points to put that size into perspective. If you counted one number every second, reaching 10 septillions would take you 315 trillion years, which is a duration far beyond any practical human or cosmic reference point. The universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old. 10 septillion years is so big that it can smash that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, the number is so big that it is 725 trillion times longer than the age of the universe. In essence, 10 septillion years is an incomprehensibly vast time span, underscoring the immense computational power of Google's Willow chip and completing a task within minutes that classical computers would need such an extreme duration to achieve. And we're not talking about your gaming laptop here. This is El Capitan we're talking about here, the biggest and most powerful supercomputer on the face of the earth. It was developed by HP Enterprises and is located in the United States. The computer has 43,808 GPUs and another 43,808 CPUs. It has approximately 11 million total cores and consumes about 30 megawatts of energy. So this is some major computing power here and still, Willow, a quantum chip that could fit in the palm of your hand, beat all 87,000 processing units with unimaginable speed. And even that computer was too slow for the benchmark test. Speaking of benchmarks, random circuit sampling is one of those tests that quantify the capabilities of a quantum processor. RCS, or random circuit sampling, is a benchmark used in quantum computing to test the performance of quantum processors. It involves generating outputs from a quantum circuit that has been designed with a random arrangement of gates, which makes predicting the result highly complex for classical computers. If that's a bit more complicated, think of it this way. Imagine you're trying to decipher a mysterious maze with invisible walls, but there's a catch. The maze changes every time you enter it. The maze layout is like the random quantum circuit where paths and dead ends are created in a completely unpredictable and intricate way. Navigating through this maze represents the evolution of the quantum state as gates are applied to the qubits. Your goal is to find the exit by wandering through the maze and marking the paths you took. However, every time you try, the invisible walls shift slightly so the paths you take vary. But don't worry, if you observe closely, there's a hidden pattern to where the X's tend to appear, the quantum probability distribution. So, after enough tries, you're bound to find the exit. 
Similarly, a random quantum circuit is a sequence of quantum gates applied to qubits in a processor. The gates are chosen in a random pattern to create a high degree of complexity in the system's quantum state. The goal is to run the circuit on a quantum computer and measure the outputs. These outputs are probabilistic, meaning they follow a specific distribution governed by quantum mechanics. Now, a quantum computer would find the end result much faster than a classical supercomputer. That's because the quantum computer has greater computing power compared to the classical computer. If we took the maze example, it would be like locking Nikola Tesla inside that maze along with the average Joe. And this same RCS benchmark was used in Google's landmark demonstration of quantum supremacy in 2019 with their Sycamore processor. Google showed that their quantum computer could solve an RCS problem in 200 seconds, which would take the best classical supercomputer an estimated 10,000 years. The more qubits and circuit depth the quantum chip has, the more complex RCS grows. By demonstrating the ability to perform tasks that seem impossible for classical computers, quantum computing asserts its potential for real-world applications. And this is where the magic happens. Now this task might sound like a pretty huge deal, but the fact of the matter is, this is just the beginning. Once the quantum computer passes the RCS test, like Willow did, the task would then be to train the computer to solve tasks that everyday people would find useful. With all of this computing power, everyday people might benefit from quantum computers enormously. For example, developing new medicines often takes years of trial and error because classical computers struggle to simulate complex molecular interactions accurately. Quantum computers, on the other hand, excel at simulating molecular structures and chemical reactions, helping researchers identify promising drug candidates more quickly and cost-effectively. This way, healthcare would be much cheaper, and faster development of life-saving medicines and personalized treatments would make the entire system more efficient. Another massive benefit that quantum computers bring to the table is in the field of transportation where classical algorithms struggle to find optimal routes for delivery networks, public transportation, or traffic flow, especially in real time, quantum computers could triumph. Quantum algorithms can solve complex optimization problems exponentially faster, enabling more efficient logistics and route planning. This translates to reduced shipping costs, faster deliveries, and less traffic congestion in urban areas, as this ultimately means more time for you and more money in your pocket. But even if it doesn't help everyday people, it will surely help scientists who will inevitably help everyday people. Classical computers struggle to simulate quantum systems like complex molecules, high temperature superconductors, or black hole dynamics due to exponential scaling and computational requirements. Quantum computers, however, can directly simulate quantum phenomena, solving equations and modeling systems that mimic the behavior of particles and forces at the quantum level. This would give us a deeper understanding of quantum field theory and fundamental forces, but also we would get a ton of insights into exotic materials, such as those for room temperature superconductors with potential applications in energy storage and transmission. All of these benefits are thanks to Nevin's law, which could be undermined by the computational costs. Nevin's law is an observation in quantum computing that describes the accelerating pace at which quantum processes improve compared to classical computing systems. In other words, the computational power of quantum computers improves at a doubly exponential rate over time. Neven's law explains why the Willow chip is exponentially better than the Sycamore chip invented just five years ago. While classical computing power, as per Moore's law, doubles approximately every 18 to 24 months, quantum computing power grows at a far faster rate because of improvements in hardware design, more and better qubits. And of course, because of improvements in quantum error, correction, and algorithms. However, Neven's law is not unstoppable there's another force acting against it, cost. In other words, the computational cost increases exponentially with the number of qubits inside the processor. 
But here's the good news. When you fix the error rates, the computational cost goes down. So now the only thing that quantum computer engineers need to worry about is keeping the error rate low. Right now, Google and other quantum computing companies are working tirelessly on improving the error rate so that we can cram about 1,000 qubits inside a quantum computer. Why a thousand? Because that's the magic number that will make quantum computers powerful enough to do the computations we talked about above. Here's another video AI enthusiasts loved watching. This is AI Exposed, demystifying the world of artificial intelligence, one video at a time. 